all the privilege in the world. Nobody ever stops us. Nobody ever says a damn thing to us. So I just feel sick that that's happening in this country. And I really want to call, call it out and I want to have a discussion about it. Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well from wherever you're watching me from, whether from Jamaica, US, UK and Canada. I appreciate you all. This is your boy Eli from Africa. So there is this specific case about racism in our own black countries and there is there has been a growing case of racism in the Caribbean and mostly in Jamaica. If not the Jamaicans being racist to their brothers, it is some investors who come to our countries and try to be racist. They try not to restrict the blacks from not using the, the facilities that are in their own soil. So let's watch this video about this big revelation about racism in Jamaica, about a white hotel that is trying to prevent blacks from entering into their vicinities. Let's watch this video, come back and have a close discussion about the same. My Jamaicans, I salute you up. Good afternoon, friends. I've been trying to find a way to write about this and I decided, you know what, I think I can do a better job speaking about it. So um, there's been a few incidents uh, since I've been here in Jamaica. It's been three weeks of, I just love this country. I love the people. I love everything about it. But uh, I just wanted to share with you, all week I was going to the marina uh, to hang out and do my work and uh, really enjoy the restaurant there, which is a beautiful space. It's part of a public uh, or marina that's all been refurbished. It's called the Errol Flynn Marina. And the restaurant has uh, a swimming pool in it. And the swimming pool is for the people who come in on the boats from the marina and they're all so far as I've seen they've, they've all been white people who swim and use the pool and use the restaurant and have drinks and um, food and so on so all week I've been swimming in the pool I don't have a boat uh, no one questioned that of course because my skin's white and I fit in and I wasn't trying to get away with anything in fact the manager of the restaurant who's Cuban was so cool about everything he said it was no problem for me to swim there and I mean it's just part of the restaurant kind of you know it's the way they've set it up is really what I'm upset about uh, well actually no what I'm really upset about is uh, what happened yesterday so um, all week, so yesterday was Thursday, so that's the fourth day. So yesterday, uh, I invited a friend of mine who's black Jamaican, very dark, what you guys say, blue black, you know, uh, very dark skinned Jamaican to come there and meet me for a drink. So, um, he, he came there and he wasn't coming for a swim or anything like that. I was going to have a swim and, uh, the security guard came up and told him that he, uh, he has to tell me that the management says that I'm not allowed to swim in the pool. So he said, no, you need to tell her that, not me. That's not up to me to do that. So the security guard came and told me that. And I just was like, okay, because I knew that that was the rule, but I observed all week and I did swim in the pool all week and there was no problem. So I know that this changed because a black person was with me in that bar. And there have been very, very few black people in the bar. So to me, it's one of those spaces. This is only my opinion and my observation, but I observe that the management of the Errol Flynn Marina, and I hope Michael Lee Chin hears this, it seems to me that they're trying to keep that space very white in a country of black people. And I'm very, very upset that they would, I don't care that they're calling on me to follow the rules. I'm cool with that. But I know the only reason they did that was, was because a black man was with me. So that's the part that I'm really calling out, you know. So then we left and went to the beach. They have a beach, um, uh, what do they call it? Bikini beach to go swimming there. And it was five to five and the security guard came, a woman, and said, we can't swim there because they're locking the gates. So this is another thing now, this is another issue, but it's like, what are you talking about? How can you lock the beach? First of all, like that was always a public space for people from Port Antonio have gone swimming in that area. We used to call it the reef. And the first hotel that was ever built in Jamaica for tourism was the reef. 
at that area, which burnt down. And then people, we always went swimming at the reef and it was a public space. So now they've made this other beach they call Bikini Beach and they lock it up at five o'clock. And I'm like, what in the heck is going on? Are you telling me that the people of Port Antonio can't go and swim in their own public area because somebody decided to lock a gate at five o'clock at night? That just doesn't make sense to me at all. And you know, the, the sad thing is, is that hardly anybody is using that area um, because of all these rules. And I said to the security, like, this is Jamaica, what kind of rules are these? All these Jamaican rules, I've never heard of these rules before. What are you guys trying to do? I think you're trying to keep the public out of their own spaces. You're trying to keep that marina for the white people that come as tourists. And that is wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. That space is a public space. That was, that's for the people of Port Antonio. And if you want to have your little swimming pool for the rich white people that come in on their yachts and, uh, get drunk and try to, <laughs> no, I'm going to stop. Okay. I'm not going to go there. Take that back. If you want to do that, then build the swimming pool somewhere else. Don't have it in the restaurant that we all want to use. That's the only place in that whole area where you can get changed or do anything where there's a washroom. All the other washrooms they've built and the other public buildings they've built are all totally run down and not being used. And I'm calling out the Jamaica Tourist Board and whoever's running this Errol Flynn Marina to smarten up and get these buildings fixed and start allowing the public to come back in and use their space. That space shouldn't just be for the white people that come in on boats, the rich white tourists that come from all over the world. No, this is for Port Antonio, for the people that live here. So that's it for today. And I'm glad I got that out. And I'd love to hear from you. I know there are other people, especially in um, mixed race couples who are Jamaican that experience this. The black partner gets interrogated and stopped and questioned and um, you know, the white person just walks right through. We have all the privilege in the world. Nobody ever stops us. Nobody ever says a damn thing to us. So I just feel sick that that's happening in this country. And I really want to call, call it out. And I want to have a discussion about it. I want to have a conversation. I want to start this conversation to really try to bring awareness. And if any of you are watching and listening and you know who I should be contacting in regards to the, um, the Errol Flynn Marina, which I understand Michael Lee Chin did a lot to redevelop that. But as far as I understand, that's still a public space, um, you know, who, who I should speak to. Or if you know a person of influence, if you want to pass on my video to them so they know what's going on, um, I would really appreciate it. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day. Hello, Jamaica. Hello, everyone. I hope you're doing well. So we are going to learn that uh, in the most cases we have only been thinking of racism in other countries rather than our own that we live in but this video has proven you wrong that racism is even in our own countries the racism in our own countries might sound crazy but yes racism is still happening into our own black countries so there has been this talk about you know, the white people are trying to discriminate and restrict the blacks from using their own facilities. Okay, I do not disagree with that. If you have a facility that you think it's good uh, not to be used by blacks because you think they may stand them on that, it's okay. But in your own country. But this is a very different case. This is happening in our own black countries. So this is not the first case I'm hearing and I, I'm, I want to thank the lady for sharing this out. She's very bold because it's rare to get such a person from another race in our own country sharing whatever is happening. Our own blacks being restricted from using the facilities that are in our own black countries. It sounds so crazy. You can't imagine if that happens in our own country. What about when we go out? So there is this uh, uh, there is this famous case that happened in Jamaica. It has happened in Kenya, Rwanda, and all those countries in Africa. So and this is now happening in the Caribbean. 
we know Jamaicans are very friendly people and if you try to offend them that's when you will see the bad side of the Jamaican people but they are good relatable and friendly people that you might want to meet in one day so this lady coming out to share that she went into a hotel with a friend who is very who is a friend a black friend from Jamaica but the friend the black friend was restricted from using some of the facilities in that hotel this talks a lot this speaks a lot because uh, we black people we are known to be those people who like using the things in our own country and how comes that we are being restricted it is so obnoxious that some of our sick some of our black brothers are employed as the securities uh, the carriers and uh, janitors and maybe all that the managers of these facilities of these hotels that are manned and managed by people outside our countries but how comes that the implementations of these vague laws of these obnoxious of these very humiliating laws that these rock companies are coming with to restrict blacks from using their the facilities are being implemented by our own black folks it is so ruthless to say that uh you know uh you are not allowed to use this this and that because the manager or someone the owner does not permit us to allow you we should be at the front line to say no to this Wrong companies employing us to 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 implement their wrong laws into our own black countries this is not going to be allowed to go this way so black 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 brothers it is not in shape to say that uh whites are uh, are discriminating and restricting us from using those facilities that they have brought and built in our countries first we must question the people working there those people are black brothers and they happily implement that looking for life i know it is a way of employment looking for life the way to maybe to adjust the levels that you are living but do you adjust the levels that you are living by exploiting some other black brothers by restricting them from using that you should be at the front line of saying no i won't work for this rock company because of this and that and that let's raise their awareness in our own countries it is getting to a point where people are being so comfortable in exploiting and in discriminating and being racist to us in our own soil in our own countries let me know whatever you think of this incident and some other that are not revealed to us by those who were mistreated in one way or the other thank you so much for watching this video do not forget to like share and subscribe please if it's the first time you're coming across this channel please 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 no hesitation to subscribe I love you my black brothers from Jamaica, from the United States, from UK, from Canada and all that are watching me in Africa. Salute you all.